the director of public health considers the population to be extremely resistant to messages that smoking is bad for them, adding that in the UK smoking prevalence has been reduced to one in seven, but he estimates it's more like one in two on the rock. He thinks raising taxes is the way forward. Governments actually end up raising more revenue when the taxes go up. Um, I am minded that there's a, a, a trade across the border. Some of it is illicit um, and certainly um, if we could raise, if we could find a way of raising prices in Gibraltar itself, um, we could keep that trade going, uh, in the, the illicit one rather than not the illicit one. Um, but um, ultimately, uh, raising prices on tobacco products would raise more revenue for the government and make our people healthier and reduce the rates of uh, so many different cancers. According to the World Health Organization, taxing tobacco is the single most effective means of tobacco control and they recommend that should be between 70 and 80 percent. So do we have any sense of how much this is in Gibraltar? I don't. Um, it would be quite interesting to find out if uh, I could gain access to the figures. Are you doing anything to try and gain access to them? Uh, it's difficult to gain access to figures in Gibraltar. I have been asked to do a report on the health needs of the population. Are you able to quantify the overall health impact of cigarettes in respect of cancer? There have been various um, bits of research that have been done around that. But there is local data for this? Uh, no, there isn't local data because data, we're, we're good at collecting paper information but we don't really have much in the way of um, uh, electronic and data. So. I, can, I can't even tell you truthfully how many people smoke in Gibraltar. People in Gibraltar sometimes worry about heavy industry in the bay and daily shipping affecting air quality and whether this impacts chances of cancer. Dr Barty says that the government is setting up an air quality commission that will seek to understand this. The fact of the matter is we're next to the Straits of Gibraltar and uh, we're not going to physically be able to move. Um, I'd be surprised if there wasn't an impact of air quality on health, whether it's directly related to cancer, uh, I don't know, but we'll need to collect information. It may be a study that we have to do. Do we understand the impact of fumes from traffic in Gibraltar? Uh, we don't. Short answer is that there's an awful lot of traffic in Gibraltar. I think there's about 33,000 registered vehicles. Again, there's research to suggest that fumes, traffic fumes, create a, a health impact. I gather that the underlying problem with all of this is that there's a lack of local data. So what are you doing to try and fix this? I've just had a conversation with Public Health England actually and part of that conversation was about how to gather better health information. It's tied up with the question of do we have even a, a high quality service because we don't really know what we're spending our resources on. But in order to address those big questions, we need detailed information about what we do. So when will you get that information? We are, in Gibraltar, we're about um, a few decades behind um, where I've come from in the UK. So there's an awful lot to do. Uh, politically, um, I think perhaps the appetite is there, but we then have to find um, the resource Remember, we're running, we're trying to run a service at the same time. While it is clear that further data will paint a clearer picture of how cancer affects Gibraltar, Dr. Barty's message is that most cancer is preventable. He urges the public to get screened if they have any concerns.